Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Sarah Reynolds. And I'm Seychelle Van Poole. So today you get Sarah and me uh, together on the pod, which is so fun because you and I haven't had uh, one with just the two of us in a little while. I know. It's, it's been a while. The, been, the two it's S's. It's been like a hot minute. <laughs> yes. Yes. <Super> S's. <laughs> So yes. you get Say and Sarah today. And what's really fun about that is we get to talk about the things that we're really passionate about and in the middle of. And um, so this episode today that we are going to be covering is one that I think has probably helped both of us in a tremendous amount of ways in our relationships. And that is, um, we're going to talk about a book called The Five Love Languages. And it's actually called The Secret to Love That Lasts. Ooh, uh, um, and it's written, ooh, spicy. Um, <laughs> and it's written by uh, Dr. Gary Chapman. And he sold more than 13 million copies, which is pretty amazing. So I'm just going to go amazing. out on there in a, on a limb and say a lot of people have probably gotten a lot of help from this, <laughs> from this book. Um, but it, for me, and I think for Sarah too, it's not just about like, the, the love side of things, which is also very important. And we both have marriages and, you know, relationships as far as friendships and connections we really want to keep, but we both really use this in business too. So, yeah. um, yep. the book gives us five love languages. And then at the end, they actually just released two bonus love languages that we're going to tell you Ooh. about. So you have to listen to the Breaking end news. to get those. Ow! Um, <laughs> but our, our five that we're going to go over today, and then we'll surprise you at the end with the two bonus are words of affirmation is number one. Number two is acts of service. Number three is receiving gifts. Number four is quality time. And number five is physical touch. And so we are going to dive into those today. That's awesome. Yeah. Just as uh, Say said, you know, this book was written for really long-term relationships. So, so those key people that you know that you want to have long-term relationships with, this book was written to help you do that. Um, we've transferred it to what we call appreciation languages at Empower Home um, because it is transferable to work, right? Yeah, so on the podcast, time. as we said in the beginning, we talk about not just having a big business, but an even bigger life. Having um, amazing relationships with those that we love is part of that big life, but then totally. also having, uh, being able to show our team members, um, appreciation in the way that they want to be appreciated in is part of how you can have a big business. So they go together. So relationships is the foundation of life, um, mm -hmm. both business and in life. Um, and this book has helped us tremendously, um, in terms of our work family, in addition to that, with our with our key relationships, so I love I that. Love it. Well, if if you look at both of our um, friendship circles, you look at both of our organizations, um, we really have, um, I think, prided ourselves on having like long term trajectory growth relationships with people in our life. Like it's yeah, it's hard to get in my inner circle because I don't need everyone. I just want like a really special, like tight knit number. And then once you're on the inside, I'm gonna fight for you like crazy. And knowing someone's love language and understanding how to appreciate them to me is so like so crucial to that part. Um and so um I think both of us really um, thrive in those intimate, really deep, long-term relationships. And so for us, this is, this is essential um, yes. in winning with this, um, which is just really cool. So yep. um, Dr. Chapman explains in this book um, that every person has a primary love language, and that's a unique way in which they each give and receive love, um, or for like a work standpoint, right, to give and receive appreciation. So without further ado, let's dive into these and some of the um, indicators so that when you're working with someone or in relationship with someone, you can pick up on what those might be and also maybe identify yours to be able to communicate out better too. I love it. Yeah. So let's dive in um, and let's talk about words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. So um, words of affirmation, um, those that want to receive and or show love through words of affirmation use verbal, so words, right, um, to show appreciation and affirmation. Um, I actually was curious of um, the definition of affirmation, mm. um, which is to declare one's support for, uphold, or defend, Ooh, or to offer that. someone emotional support or encouragement. 
through our words, through our words. So you can affirm someone in different ways, but this love language is, is saying that the person that has this love language, what's important to them is hearing words like verbal cues from those that they love, that they're doing a good job. So hearing words of Mm. love, um, any type of encouragement, through words, both giving and receiving, mm-hmm. um, offering sincere compliments is examples of that, right? So when when you think something, um, say something, right? Especially mm-hmm. to someone in your world that has this love language. Um, if you think it, like if you think they look nice that day, if you th- like like their earrings, mm-hmm. if you think the way that they showed up and when they spoke was good, tell them, tell them. Mm-hmm. So you have a thought that's good about the person, speak it speak it. Mm. Right. Um, another way is like expressing gratitude. So saying thank you, um, is so powerful. Like absolutely those two words, thank you, huge, huge. Mm -hmm. And everyone, and and it's also like, it's a verbal way of showing someone that they're seen. Like literally like it's, it's, I see you and my words are affirming. I see how you show up or I see what you did and I'm acknowledging that. And that's for someone with words of affirmation, that's really what they're wanting is that understanding and acknowledgement of, of their actions or their presence or whatever it might be. Yeah. Now the, the thing that I, I sort of love about love languages and I've been studying this now for probably a couple decades now, I'm not sure when he first wrote the book, but um, my dad is a big believer in this and has taught, taught me a lot on it. And um, one of the things that he said is like, the opposite is also true. Like, so meaning Mm. this is how someone receives love. This is also how you could really hurt them. So like someone with words of affirmation, um, you saying anything negative or criticizing is one of the worst things that you can do. Now, which makes it hard, especially in a work setting, because we do with leading people have to have fierce and direct and loving conversations. But I think it's important Whenever I know a team member or someone I love has this love language, mm-hmm. I'm very careful when it comes to my words, like yeah. making sure I show appreciation, I sh- I'm affirming them in my words. And then also mm-hmm. when I do need to address something with them, I really focus on the things that they're doing really well mm-hmm. in the same time I'm focusing on something that they need improve improvement in and then coming from a place of love, right? Uh, the, mm-hmm. Like any words that I'm sharing is from a place of love. So you got to be careful. You want to show love and then you also want to make sure you don't tear someone down Yeah, in terms of the opposite of their love language. That That's such a good point. And I find too, um, wow, that's really powerful, Sarah. That's so true. Um, I hadn't thought about it in that format, but you're absolutely right. Um, and the other the other part of that too is words of affirmation can show up um, in handwritten notes, like yes. in, in writing or words of affirmation can show up in verbal or like, I, I know too, for people that I know are words of affirmation, like voice memos to them or mm-hmm. making sure you're leaving a voicemail that they can replay again later, like things that are saveable when someone's having a bad day and they're a words of affirmation person, um, gives them a data bank to draw from to pull through on harder days. So um, that's just like a good, a good as a leader, mindful note too, if somebody's a words of affirmation person. Um, I love that. Number two, which is near and dear to my heart personally, is acts of service. And I think it might be Sarah's too. Um, and on this, they they talk about the importance of actions speak louder than words for this love language. So providing acts of service demonstrates love by performing helpful tasks and deeds in your partnership and your friendship and your business. And so acts of service can mean um, cooking a meal for someone. Acts of service can mean doing household chores like Nick, like nothing is hotter than when I come home and the dishwasher's unloaded and the laundry's put away or like we we couldn't get a contractor to our lake house um, when we got up here this summer. And Nick just started like redoing doing the, the work. The island. Yeah, he just started doing the work. And I was like, I, I don't think you understand how hot you are right now when you are doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you with this with this trim and this hammer is so hot yeah. right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like every day now, that's all he puts on. Yeah, he's, like, he's got his work on this trim in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a ladder. <laughs> yeah. um, seriously, though, it's for someone who, right, like for acts of service, it's like, oh my gosh, um, it's amazing. Offering to 
help or assist in the work that they're doing, like getting their car washed or detailing it for them, picking up dry cleaning. It's funny because they seem like chores to someone, but they actually show up as love for somebody else. Um, and I know, so true. like, Sarah, I've heard you mention this one, but like making sure you have what you need for the day. Yeah, like, that's that's something. So my, my I'm a words of affirmation girl and acts yeah. of service is, is George's. Yeah. So the cool thing about the book is it talks about how you have to adjust for the person mm-hmm. that you are wanting to have that deep relationship for, right? And so you naturally show love in right. many times the way that we re- want to receive love, right? Um, and so George, his his is his is acts of service. So he shows me love all throughout the day by serving, and he does that with mm-hmm. our entire family. And one of the ways he does that is he's amazing at like foreseeing my needs ahead of time. Yeah. And I've grown to really love his love language of acts mm-hmm. of service because it's little things like if he knows I'm speaking um, a lot uh, in that day, like teaching or training or doing the podcast, mm-hmm. um, he'll put like a cup with the throat coat tea in my car already for me, like ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, like just little things he does to just foresee my needs throughout the day mm-hmm. just is his way of showing love. And I take time to appreciate it and make sure that he knows I noticed. And I think that's what really matters both ways. Yeah. Right. I, to- I love that. And it, something else that's really interesting is, is in leadership that like, that's also sometimes if like I am an access service person, that's how I show up showing love to other people. And so like we had a team member whose husband was really sick and we realized that they didn't have all their affairs totally together yet. And so instead of sending flowers, right, I had one team member whose love language is gifts. So she's getting Mm -hmm. like gift cards and meals delivered. And I'm on the other hand, sending attorneys to the hospital (laughs) and right, like locking down bank accounts and (laughs) like medical power of directive and things like that. Because I, I, that was, I was like, I, I don't know what flowers to order, but I know in this moment, the service that you are going to need. And it, I mean, you know, having that well executed, having like, you know, all of that stuff done, saved them from having to go to probate. And I mean, it, it yeah. ended up being like a matter Huge. of 72 hours. So, you know, wow. if, if you have a love language, also realize that that can be your superpower in times of stress or in times of leadership. Mm, and so and I think about words of affirmation for you, Sarah, like I've watched you lead so many times in crisis by verbally being able to cast the vision in such an eloquent, beautiful way. And it's because you you love your people through words of affirmation, right? And and confidence comes from that. Yeah. And it's shown yeah. up so many times in times of crisis as such a superpower of yours. So true. So it's really cool. I, I, I love that. It does show up in leadership. And I didn't think about it that way. I started Six weeks ago, I started every day doing an hour coaching session with our agents where I'm coaching them on, they went on an appointment, they didn't get it. And I'm coaching them to the appointment. So we talk about each specific appointment. And um, yesterday, as I asked the agents that were on there, I said, you know, mention something good that's come from this because every day we can now celebrate um, those that are showing up, right? And um, she said, my confidence level, because you speak like belief into me. Like when Mm -hmm. you are coaching me, you're like, you're going to get it. I know you're going to get it. This is what you're going to do next. Like, and you're so right when you were sharing that, that's for sure how I show up in terms of leadership, but I didn't view it that way. So thank you for pointing that out. That's awesome. You're welcome. Yes. It's fun. Um, I love doing these with you. I always learn something. I know. This is totally selfish for us. I'm like, yes, you're right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Number three. So we've got words of affirmation, acts of service. Number, the third is receiving gifts. Okay. Mm. So this love language is um, talked about in one of the chapters of the book. And it's really not, a lot of people, when they hear receiving gifts, gifts, they think monetary value. Mm -hmm. Um, But really those that have this love language to them, the thoughtfulness and effort behind it is actually what matters. So they view it as like you were at a store and you saw something that reminded you of me, right? And to them, those that have this love language, that's what they they want. They want to know that you're thinking about them and that it shows up through gift giving. Um, And so there's a lot of um, people in my world that have this um, love language and I try my best to do a good job, like just picking things out for them throughout the time, like throughout the year. And it doesn't have to be large items. I think that's 
I got confused with it when I first read the book of like right, thinking like grand, that it has to be all these grand, yeah, gestures, grand gifts. Right? Like right. no, and it, it, sometimes it's even something ma- you can make, right? Mm-hmm. But it's really um, how someone sees it as like gifts they view as like a tangible yeah. way of seeing love. It's like a token, um, and so yeah. yes, so any form mm-hmm. of gift, either big or small, um, matters with those mm-hmm. that have this love language. I love that one of. Um, in our neighborhood, we have this woman named Kristen and she and her husband got married really, really young and just started buying up commercial real estate back when our neighborhood Mm -hmm. was like, not the cool, awesome, hip part of town. It was like very, not that. And, um, they just started buying up all these little commercial buildings. And now they're one of the largest, they're like yours of my age. They now are like the largest commercial like building owner wow. in Oak Cliff in our in Dallas, which is just incredible. Um, but her love language is gifts. So much so, but she had someone back out of one of her spaces. And it was supposed to be like a little furniture store coming in and they backed out. And she decided to set up like a mercantile. And what she does oh. is she buys from all the local businesses. She buys from them. And then um, it's basically like the local one-stop shop for gifts and for um, like wine and cooking stuff. And she like has candle making classes and, but you walk in there and it's like the most incredible gift giving experience. They wrap it for you. We'll ship it for you. I mean like all of it. And it's just, it's unbelievable, but it's totally cool because it's like, Kristen, this is your love language, like personified into like a business. Um, But it just, you know, it's neat. It's neat when you can see it show up for entrepreneurs, like their total love language in their business. So I love it. it Into her own business, which is Does Quinn have any of her earrings there? Quinn did. She cut her first wholesale deal with Kristen. Nice. So, Cutie That's Pie awesome. Jewels is yes. up there. And, I and love Quinn it. Quinn actually, they love her so much up there. Quinn works up there now. So she goes <sighs> and she'll work the counter. And like, I walked in one day and everybody else is in the store like stocking and doing other stuff. Quinn is working the register. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and she's Say. like scanning the cards and double checking it. That's and putting amazing. It in. And I'm like, oh, oh my, my gosh, goodness. This is nine year old. What am I going to do with her? She's like, oh, hey, mom. <laughs> wow. But that is just, awesome. Yeah. She's just like, if, if, yeah, if you're in Dallas, you need to stop by Davis Street Mercantile because it's, she's just an amazing experience and gift giving curator. So it's very cool. I love that. I love um, it. So, number four, this is Nick's love language. Um, I'm going to argue it might actually be one of the hardest ones to give as an I entrepreneur. I think so. I think so. I <laughs> agree. I can, I can say that being married to it. It is, it's the most incredible love language. And I think also one of the hardest ones to express if it's not yours, because uh, number four is quality time. Yep. And that revolves around undivided attention meaningful conversations and shared experiences. And it means that there's an importance on like setting aside distractions, dedicating focused time to connect. (laughs) You know, it's not like we're in real estate where things happen all the time. I know. People. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Like lots of people um, need us. (laughs) Yeah. So we, we've had to really build, um, like, quality time rituals and habits around this Mm. and active listening around it. Because um, for Nick, the the best way I can say I love you is to be paying undivided attention. It's not like he needs it 24 seven, but like that's, that's the love language. And when we've gone several days where we've been ships passing in the night because kids and work and parents and life and all that. And he'll say to me, like, I feel like I haven't, I haven't spent time with you. I haven't connected Mm. with you in several Mm. days and you'll feel that void. Um, And so a lot of people get this confused with like spending a lot of time. Um, And I found that it's actually, it's not about the quantity, it's about quality. So like when we miss date nights each week, like we feel this deeply. Um, And so here's some of the ways that you can eliminate distraction while you're spending quality time. And these were Sarah's ideas and I thought they were so good. So first is like, put your phone away. Yeah. I think a lot goes with that. Like put, yeah, put the phone away. Physically yes. take your phone in front of them and flip it upside down on the counter so they can see yep. that you're not distracted by it right now. Yep. I will do that. And that includes like, like yes. that includes like Sorry. watches, like Apple Watch, like yeah. anything that you have that's like dinging with notifications. Yep. Like just because you have your phone down doesn't mean you're not paying attention to what's going on. Right. So like 
that as well. Like, so That's putting it so on do not good. disturb, yeah. um, something like that would be good. My phone has been on permanent do not disturb for like three or four years now. I mean, in all reality, Quinn accidentally put it on that. And then it was so <laughs> glorious. I never changed it back. Accidentally. But, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's really been amazing because I don't I don't hear that like reticular activator of the bzz, 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 bzz yes. all the time. And that's also yep. why I don't have an Apple Watch yep. because I can't handle the um, notifications. Like I, I, I'm, too res- I'm too high on the responsiveness on like yes. our personality yeah. assessments to be able to not respond to something like that. If there's a fire and I know about it, I'm going to try to do something about it. So yeah. I just have to like not know about it. Um, I love this one too. Like leave your car or your phone in the car when you go out to dinner. Yep. Just leave it in the car. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or go to a space where it's just the two of you and no other people are around. Like this is where Nick and I will go and do a spa day every couple months. Mm-hmm. And just like the the Jewel Spa is one we love in Dallas because it's close to the house, but they also have a great like pool down below the building that you can just go soak in and order room service and whatever. And it's like, you don't have to stay at the hotel. You can just kind of have the experience and it's just so nice. Um, But I I know Nick is always like, we need to do this all the time. (laughs) Yeah, of course. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, totally, totally. Just like I, I talked about with words of affirmation, like the opposite, right, is like, if you're feeling like someone that you're in a relationship with is like, not feeling loved by you or like they're, they're making yeah. shots, saying things, you know, mm-hmm. what can happen is that you realize like, oh my goodness, I haven't spent any form of quality time, yeah. which to a quality time love language person, that's like the worst thing you could do to them yeah. is not spend yeah. at least some form of quality time mm-hmm. a day. Yeah. Um, you know, 20, 30 minutes, it's not quantity, it's quality of the yeah. time. So undivided yeah. attention is important. One thing, one thing we've started doing is I've pushed my morning meetings back to where after we drop Quinn off at school, we'll go take a 20 minute walk together with the dog. It's 20 That's minutes. So good. But yes. it's so good. And and we yep. started instituting that because after the last year with my dad's health, we were so burnt out by the time we got to December. We were so tired and and we'd been together. The, I mean, you know, so much. But Nick looked at me in December and said, I've never felt so lonely. Oh. And it was, it was such, a, such a profound statement as, as I've been serving everyone, right? Yes. That, because yeah. that's how I express love. I have literally yes. been serving everyone. Everyone. But what I hadn't been doing was giving the quality time of the undivided attention that he needed because I was an extreme acts of service, taking care of everything in the family. And so that's in in January when we started just like, I'm going to move my meetings back 30 minutes. We're going to take a walk in the morning. And like, sometimes we'll pick up breakfast tacos. Sometimes we'll just take a walk around the neighborhood and just connect for the day. And it's totally changed how we connect and communicate um, throughout the day. So if if you're feeling that way and, you know, you're you're experiencing maybe words like that or, or in a relationship, you're experiencing that. There's little tiny hacks you can do just to move something around very slightly to say no to something that allows you to say yes in a big way to that that person. I, I love that say. And what, what I love about it is I think sometimes like bitterness can creep into a relationship. Oh, yeah. When oh, yeah. we, if, if we had, like your mindset was like he shared his need. And I think a yeah. lot of people would be like, well, I've been serving all these people. Like I've been, how can you not feel loved by me? Look at all the stuff I'm doing, right? But what he was saying was like, you're not speaking my love right. language. Like I don't feel right. loved by you serving. I feel loved w- with your time and you're not giving that to me. And what I love is that you didn't have like a victim mindset of just like, well, mm-hmm. no, I'm doing all this other things. Instead, you made adjustments to make sure that you were speaking his language. Yeah. And I think so many people think everyone else should change. Mm -hmm. you know, but, but Mm -hmm. them. And that's not Mm -hmm. how you have deep relationships. How you have deep relationships is meeting the person that you love and care about where they are. What do they need? Right. Yes. And so making those, and if each person, if each person, I remember my dad, you know, he's a pastor and has canceled, counseled hundreds and hundreds of couples. And he said, you know, a lot of people say that marriage or relationship is 50, 50. And he's like, no, it's a hundred, a hundred. Absolutely. Like yeah. every, if every Absolutely. person puts a hundred percent in and all you do is pay attention to, are you putting the hundred percent in? Don't worry yeah. about if they are, are you yeah. showing up a hundred percent? Um, then that's how you have a beautiful relationship. But it's the, the minute that you start counting, you know, yeah, like the thinking score. it's 50, 50, mm-hmm. my, yeah, keeping score, mm-hmm. then that's where it, 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 
mm-hmm. goes down, right? Yeah. And so I think I love say that you adjusted and changed your calendar to ensure that you're loving him the way that he feels yeah. loved. So it's a it, true language of love. It, it is a true language of love. And, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't have like a one minute moment where I was like, ah! like, yeah. <laughs> How exhausted I am. I totally had like a one minute quiet to myself as he's talking. Like, do you not see me right now? But I realized in the moment that was not going to be the appropriate response. (laughs) So I adjusted my attitude and my actions to meet the moment. But I I mean, I think it's okay, you know, in the moment if you have a little bit of that. But like I've learned. Of course. Because Sarah knows that I'm highly responsive. And so I, I literally have to hold my jaw shut when someone's doing something like that. So she'll see me sometimes on like some of our Her Best Life board meetings and I'll literally just be holding my jaw shut. Like do not say anything. <laughs> from, but it's not like I'm like, I'm, I'm not like an emotional responder, but I am a rapid responder. And yes. so sometimes I just have to shut my trap and just keep it to myself. So that was one of those times that that really benefited me when I just held yep. my jaw shut and <laughs> kept it to myself. Yes. Yep. But he, he was right. I mean, I wouldn't have been right in that moment anyways. He was right. Um, because as yep. partners, we do have to show up for each other. Yeah. And I was showing yep. up for everybody else, but I wasn't showing up for him in that way. Yeah. In the way that he hears it. Like, because yes. language, yeah. right? I mean, using, like, yeah. this is truly how they hear, feel yes. loved is with yeah. this language, whichever totally. one is theirs. So my, the last one, um, well, we have two bonus ones, but the last Ooh. one um, in the book, um, number five is physical touch. And so this is my, this is yeah. my second. So uh, words of affirmation. Then second for me is physical touch. I'm a, I'm a hugger. Yeah. Um, and so it talks about um, the power of touch um, mm-hmm. and the role it plays in emotional intimacy. Um, mm-hmm. And it doesn't, this doesn't apply just to like, a lot, a lot of people think this is just sexual and it's actually right. not sexual. Yeah. It's any form of physical touching, holding hands, holding one another, hugging, mm-hmm. um, you know, even at work, like a pat on the back or a yeah, high a five to a, phys- or, yes, mm-hmm. to, to a physical touch person matters. Um, mm-hmm. They feel that. They feel mm-hmm. connected to you in that way. Yeah. Um, Don't be creepy about so, it at work also. Yes. Like, just, yeah. Keep it, yeah, keep careful. it, you know, above board. If you're thinking, yes. oh, I need to go touch all my team members, like, don't yeah, go no. do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I have a, I have one of our top agents who's a male. It, his number one love language is is physical touch. So um, I'm a hugger and I hug yeah. lots of people, yeah, yeah. but like I make sure when I see him, I'm giving him a hug, high fiving him, like just yeah. like getting close to one another. It's easy for me because it's my second love language, so it's not. Yeah. But it, you do want to. You do have boundaries yeah. for work. Um, <laughs> and, and in New York, it's expressed differently than in Texas where it's acceptable to hug everyone. In New York, they don't uh, appreciate a hug as much. So <laughs> having worked up there, just, you know, know your audience is all I'm going to yes. say. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but but if you're in a relationship with someone with this love language, you know, taking time to hold hands, to cuddle, yeah. to like that matters to them. Yeah. And it's, again, it's not sexual. It's more of no. physical intimacy with any form of touching yeah. um, is important to those that have that love mm-hmm. language. I love that. Okay. So you ready for our two bonuses? Yes. This is so exciting. So these just got released. So this is part of why we <laughs> wanted to do this episode because there's two new ones. And I love this next one because this is my sister, 100% my sister. Um, so number six is shared experiences, which I just think is so great. So it's through the art of taking time to intentionally plan something to do mm. together is the first part of the shared experience. So it's the thoughtfulness in like the curating of the experience. And then mm. the second part is the shared experience together. So, you know, this might be your love language. Um, if you feel closer to your partner after like attending an event or a concert together, like you'd love to go do workshops and things like that together. Um, if you love completing like group tasks or group challenges together, um, maybe you always prefer to have like a co-pilot on your um, road trips. Maybe you're not a solo road tripper. You love to have somebody with you um, or you feel closest and you're making new memories, um, but you prefer doing things with and through people. And like my sister's so good at this. Like anytime Aww. we're together, she's like, what are we going to go do? And I'm like, I don't know. I thought we were going to sit and have like words of affirmation with each other and then do the dishes. (laughs) Is that not what we're going to (laughs) do? She's like, no. So I found this like wine and paint class. And then after that, we're going to go do lunch. And then after that, we're going to go do this. Like it's it's about the art of curating the experience and the shared 
combine together. It's, it's so much fun to have as a sibling because she always has, I'm like, what'd you do this weekend? She's like, I adopted a zebra and then I went and did goat <laughs> yoga. And then like, so fun. So it, it's, that's awesome. it's a really, really fun thing. But if, if that's her love language, doing the dishes and like having a deep conversation is not a group experience they're looking for. So you have and to And I think that that's the big, when I first read this, I was like, well, isn't that quality time? And then I was like, and then when I read more about it, it's like, no, it's sometimes you're actually not talking to each other. Right. You're no, literally ex- Go to sharing an experience yeah. together. Yeah. Going to a, Go movie, to a movie together, mm-hmm. a concert. Go to a concert. So it's like experiencing yeah. something to where you can walk out and say, we did that together. Yes. Um, I love that. So the, yeah. ne- the next bonus one um, is emotional security emotional mm-hmm. security. Um, so this might be your lo- love language. If you like asking a lot of questions and you feel closest when your partner is sharing like fears, dreams, past, like, so deep conversations that get mm. to the heart of something, um, it's, it would be someone that mm-hmm. has this love language. Um, but deep thinker, curious listener, um, someone that really shares, um, their feelings and sort of Mm -hmm. puts their heart on their sleeve is someone that might have this love language. Um, And this might be actually one of mine after reading it um, because of just like, it it matters a lot to me when people are super transparent and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel so much closer with them and I tend to do that as well. Um, And so what others might think of as a scary conversation, Mm -hmm. those with these, with this love language, that's like love to them. Is like mm. there, it's not scary at all. Instead, it's like the highest sign of of showing love. So mm. those are um, the seven now seven love languages. I love it. Okay, so I want to play a game. Um, who do you think are co- what is what are our co host love languages? I have a guess on Wendy, so I can. Okay, start what's by your guess on Wendy? Out. Yes. Okay, so I think I actually think oh, so if we we usually have like two is kind of like a leading and a lagging yes. right right behind it. So acts of service is for sure one of hers. But I would say right behind that, if you look at the way she leads our circle retreats, would be that emotional security. Mm. Like having those um, deep, deeper deeper mm-hmm. conversations. She's always the one, one of the first ones to lean into the scary questions or the hard questions. True. Um, and so I feel like that might be, like if we described that new one to her, I feel like she might be like, yeah, yeah, that is me. That is me. What about, no, um, I- what do you think about Tiffany? Hmm. Um, Tiffany, I actually, um, I think she might be words. I was going to say words of affirmation. Maybe quality time. That could be. Yeah. The other one that I thought about was shared experiences might be one for her too, especially like the journey that she's gone on recently. Like that could definitely be one creeping up too. Yep. What was your second one? You said that your Mine, um, acts of service and then what was your second yeah, one? Yeah. Acts of service is definitely my first one. And then um, gifts actually is my second one. I was, I was going to guess that when you were, you're so good about the queen gifts. of swag. Yes. yes. I, I love do, it. I just enjoy I love it. it. Yeah. But it's, I don't, it's not grand gestures. It's like little, it's little yeah. thoughtful things. Like I saw this yeah. and I thought of you. Yeah. So Kimber, Kimber's, um, I actually know it because she told me. Okay. So I don't know cheating, but what are Kimber's? She's she's words of affirmation, which surprised me because normally I, I that. Yeah. normally I would pick up on that because I'm words of affirmation. Uh-huh. Um, but I'll never forget. Um, like a couple months ago, she said when you sent me that birthday video, I had done a birthday video for her, like just one on one of just like uh, happy birthday, like yeah. I I love you. I she said that's like the best thing you've ever done for me, and it was like words. And I, and so Aww. now I'm like uh, always very intentional with her. Cause I understand that that's her love language, but yeah, she's a, she's a words of affirmation girl. I believe that. I, I think her second one is a uh, gifts. That's going to be my guess. Mm. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is like when we were at our last retreat and I was like, what did you, what did you pick out? Like, cause she purchased a couple of things and it was a couple of things for other people. And I was oh, like, hmm. yeah. I wonder if gifts might be her, her. Yeah. So she one. was we'll thinking to, about others. That's good. We'll have to, really we'll good. have to ask them and see if we guessed right on these. So co-hosts, yes. when you listen to this, you need to uh, let us know if we guessed correctly on you or if we're off. Um, yep. and that'll be super Now fun. you guys can all go, if you haven't taken the love languages test, you can put it in Google. It's free. 
Um, it's a little quiz. I think it's like a few questions. Um, so it doesn't take too much time. I would highly recommend if you haven't taken it to do that. And then also those that you love and care about do that as well. But so I much like of, um, not just having a big business, but an even bigger life comes back to how we love one another, how we show appreciation to one another. So that's through words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, physical touch. And then the two bonus ones, shared experiences and emotional security. Um, so get out there, study those that you care deeply about and make sure that you're meeting them where they are and get out there and not just have a big business, but an even bigger life. Thanks for joining us today. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>